Hello guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms. And today, penned up to the farm, it's Thursday, and we're gonna be chopping. But first, let's take a look at some soybean harvest. We're just driving by. Looks like a brand new New Holland Combine. That is something that I have not seen in the area in a very long time. You don't see a lot of guys that run New Holland Combines around here. It looks like he's harvesting some beans, a little bit of weeds in these patches, but oh yeah, that's definitely a brand new New Holland Combine. 990 maybe? Right there, you'll see it here shortly. Definitely dusty, the beans are ready. Yeah, I can't tell. Looks like a 990, but beans are definitely ready for some guys, for us they are not ready. So we'll get to them when we get to them, but I'm hoping we'll be chopping today, we'll finish tomorrow, and we'll start combining on Saturday. Let's get up to the farm. Well, I just had a 20 minute detour. Had, just driving near Goose Lake and a gal ended up in the ditch. I don't know if a tire blew or whatever, but she's doing okay. She's a, she's a, her car is in the ditch. She's gonna need a tow. It's a pretty steep ditch. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but she's gonna be okay. She's good. Man, well, that was a little bit of a detour, but now I'm just heading up to the farm right now. It's just about noon. The field view guy is gonna be here in a half hour. So I gotta get up there. Oh my lands, this stuff is dry, way too dry. I saw the dust a mile away. I was like, I really hope that's not us. It's us. Ah, crap. So that's not good. We don't like chopping when it's this dry and dusty because it's just dangerous. You know, it's fire hazard. There's a bunch of risks with it. But it is what it is. We've just been in a drought, so we haven't been able to run anything for so long. And wow, that stuff is dry and that stuff is down too. Jeez, it's not good. But anyway, I'm gonna hurry up and hop in that 340 and we'll get moving. Before we get too far in the video, guys, be sure to drop a like for some awesome chopping action today and comment. Have you guys ever seen a chopper or forward harvester in action? Oh, shoot, never mind, 340's already moving. Sunglasses, Ariat shirt, all uh, from uh, my partner channel partners down below. Discount codes will be down in the description. Awesome stuff, I love them both, especially these Ariat clothing. Oh, I love it. All right, never mind. So those guys will be able to do it. They're just uh, breaking lands kind of close to the shop. So I'll be fine. I'm gonna keep the radio on me in case they need me, but I'm actually gonna go finish. All right, never mind. So those guys will be able to do it. They're just uh, breaking lands kind of close to the shop. So I'll be fine. I'm gonna keep the radio on me in case they need me, but I'm actually gonna go finish install. Hey, Talking to me, Kurt. No. These Midland radios are handy as heck, but I'm gonna go uh, and start uh, finishing that combine upgrade video that I uh, I'm gonna finish that combat upgrade project that we talked about in the previous video card to that one right here but that basically just needs to get the uh, CBs fully installed and then the field field view guy is gonna be here in about 10 minutes or so we're gonna work on installing that as well got me the screws got an Allen set I'll make sure these screws work then I'm gonna grab the actual mounting bracket and bring it over to the to the uh, vice we're gonna drill holes in the mounting bracket so I can install it in the cab and then we'll be golden that time it'll be about lunch or the field view guy will get here. Time to go drill happy. Take it, you're the field view guy. Yes. Awesome. So big thanks to uh, Andy who works at Climate Field View or who works for Field View I should say. So he was down here kind of showing us the ropes. Didn't have it, didn't get anything on camera but we talked a lot, I learned a lot. Appreciate him coming down and helping us out. So we'll get back to it. We are going to have field view fully installed on the 7150 by tomorrow morning. And he's gonna come back down and he's gonna have some stuff. He's gonna give us his loaner essentially. And then I'm gonna, Pat's actually just placing the order right now to get the, uh, get the to replace the loaner that he's gonna give to us. We will have this thing fully upgraded tomorrow, but I'm hoping that I can get it, get this, uh, where did I stick that screw? I'll have to find that. But I'm hoping to get this thing mounted in there right now. Let's do it. I misdrilled. Nice. Awesome. Let's go redrill. Oh, I'm just going to trial fit it this time. Make sure it'll work. Which I think it will. There we go. Start cranking her down now. Now we'll see if she works. Pat, you get a copy or Curtis? Yeah, I got it. 
I'm just checking. I got the radio in the 7150, making sure it's working. Yeah, back in here. Sweet. This mount it actually turned out pretty nice. You'll have to take a look at it. So the only downside is the power cable is going to be hanging down right here. But that should be okay because I think the iPad will be in the way. Or be, we'll be right here too. That's the only downside that I could see. I might, I might tuck this away, like right there or so. I'll probably have the radio mount right here. And then this is just a charger we'll plug in for the iPad, so we don't need it right now. But this radio mount actually turned out pretty slick. It's nice and sturdy. It uses the factory built antenna. You can kind of see. Here's the antenna. It goes right up through the headliner. I just took a knife and poked a hole through it. I'm very excited how it turned out. So now the finishing touch. We'll put the... Uh, mic holder on. And that's where she'll be. Pretty slick Midland setup right there if I do say so myself. Nice loud radio. That'll work. So there's Pat and Curtis. Curtis is running the new 340 and the chopper. There goes Nathan in the truck. I'm gonna hop in this 340 and go get the other wagon that's full and we're gonna go dump it and probably bring it out there and I'm yeah, not sure what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go, we have one full wagon sitting down over there towards the, uh, towards the cattle yard over there. So I'm gonna go grab that, go dump it so we have all wagons that are empty. Pat is just right there on the other side of that semi and they are chopping away. So many loads we can get. Getting all this stuff opened up, you can kind of see we have quite a bit of down corn, more down corn here than we would have liked. That's definitely a symptom of the drought, for sure. Construction's still going on, they're laying gravel on the end, and they just gotta lay gravel and put paint down, and then they're gonna be good to go with this new stretch of road. Thank you to all the road crews out there, by the way. So Pat's got a wagon hooked on, he's gonna break a headland down, and then We'll see, he should be able to make it all the way down before he's full. He'll break a headland, then Nathan will come back and fill in Nathan on the way back, drop the wagon. And I think Nathan's probably going to take over. Pat's going to work on the combine with Bun. Nathan, Curtis, and I are going to chop while Brian is packing the pile. Should have a pretty good video for you, for you guys today because the time lapse on the... I got a time lapse going on the uh, pit right now, so that'd be, I'm hoping that turns out cool. Those guys are going to chop on that end. This wagon's full. I'm going to hook up to it and get it out of here and go dump. Go ahead and take this pretty full load. Take this thing up to the farm. There they go. There's Curtis. I'll pull in here, I'll back up onto the uh, onto the pile as far as I can and try not to jackknife it. And we'll dump my load. All this is, is it's hydraulic. So I'm just pushing a hydraulic lever and I'm just creeping forward, just trying to dump the pile. Pretty neat. Okay, I was knocking how wide this driveway was before, but this is actually pretty dang handy. For filling this, very handy. And shoot, when we're not filling it, we could just pile hay on it, probably. Heel. I need to pull the 7088 out. Because my Uncle Bun's just about here, he's going to work on it. Pat's actually going to quit chopping and let Nathan take over and he's going to help Bun work on it. And see they're over there chopping, it's much less dusty back there, which is good. So we're really kind of curious to see the standability between those two. We actually, Pat's harvesting a different variety right now, so that'll be interesting.
I didn't hit anything. Success. I'm gonna go drop this other wagon. I'm gonna pull it out back out to the field, drop it. And then probably park it, maybe get the drone up until they're needing me. Now all I gotta do to unhook this thing is to yank out the hoses, stick them back over here, take the hydraulic line or take the pin, hitch pin out. We're good to go. Note to self, Ron, use your Midland radios before you do anything. I dropped the wagon just short of the cattle yard here because I thought that's where he would have wanted it, just out of the way, but over here in case he needs it. But he's actually gonna hook onto it when he gets back to this end. So, whoops. They're running right now. Let's get the drone out. What do you say? Actually, no, I probably don't have time because looks like Nathan's just about full. His wagon in the back's just about full. So, yeah, I don't have time. Nathan's got a full load here. He probably took that corner a little too hot. That's all right. So wrenching my plan, this one actually is only set up to unload out the front. So that's awesome. I gotta whip around and get lined up to dump off the front here. Curtis is gonna dump off the back. Double dumping. We ran into a couple hiccups now. So uh, the 340 right now has the, the 540 to 1000 adapter on it. Uh, that What that is is it basically it allows you to run Different implements require different speeds. So there's a standard out there across all manufacturers that there's a 540 PTO, a PTO that spins at 540 RPM, and a 1000, and they have different splines. And you can make adapters that go in between them. So right now the 540 is, the 340 is set up for 540, but it has a 1000 adapter on there, so I can't unload anything. So I'm gonna have to get the, three, the 190 and unload it with that. And the 190 now, this tractor is an oldie, probably 15 years old if I was gonna guess got 6176 hours on it she's been a trooper for us we've had it since it was brand new it's put a lot of hours on this used to be our main spray tractor when we had a pull tight sprayer our main hand tractor for a while and it pulls a lot of wagons in the fall so right now this thing's set up for a 540 pto which is what these meyer wagons um it's what they unload at so i'll unload it out the front and you guys will get a time lapse of it Unloading. It's probably not a bad idea we're unloading out the front out this one to kind of make that crown on top of this thing taller. So how these things unload out the front, they have a conveyor that can go either direction. When you go out the back, we have just a hydraulically open door. When you go out the front, we have these metering augers. And then uh, we have that side conveyor that conveyed out the side, like you're seeing now. Heading out to chop some earlage. Getting started. Gonna run you this weekend. Can't wait. Let's get rolling. Filthy! Got a case of can't see Shh, crap. Got a little bit of down corn. Still producing pretty well. We're almost got two loads here. Haven't even been all the way around this field. This is the field right below Jerry's house, we call it. I think it's like 20 some acres. It's doing pretty good if you can't quite make it around with two loads. It's right around 220 usually for a yield, roughly. Wind got her a little bit. Got some kinked over corn. Cornhead should be able to get her picked up though for the most part. 
I'm gonna go grab another wagon. So Pat's opening up this big 160 acres of corn. So in order to open it up, he needs quite a bit of wagons to be able to efficiently and effectively get all this corn out. So there's a wagon at the end of the waterway I'm gonna go get. You can't, well, you guys can't see him. There's a, there he is way over there on that end. So we'll go get that wagon. And let me tell you guys, these Midland radios have been key for efficiency in our operation. You guys really should get some of your own. We're running MXT 115s and the X Talkers. I prefer the X Talkers because I'm never in the same piece of equipment for more than an hour, it seems. And then the 115s, and we have 400s as well, scattered throughout all of our equipment. So they're pretty sweet. You guys can check them out. Don, let's go dump it. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I am actually, as you guys can see, we're harvesting corn. It's two weeks from right now from when this video, actually a week and a half from when this video was taken, we're picking some good corn right now like upper 200 bushel corn. So that's awesome. But I'm gonna end this video right here. I'm gonna split it in half. I had like a 35 minute long video and that's way too much for you guys. So I'm gonna split it in half right here. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Link in the description for 10% uh, off your area out merchandise if you guys are interested. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We really do appreciate it when you guys do. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hearts and Family Farms. And before we close, I'm gonna end it with a time lapse of uh, us filling the bunker thus far in the video. So thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, take it easy, stay safe and ta-ta for now. Peep the new combine. Woo!